Welcome to the Nassau County Report. I'm Nassau County Executive Tom Galata. Welcome back to the Nassau County Report. I'm Nassau County Executive Tom Galata. In the second part of our program, we have a, a very exciting new initiative that was undertaken in this county uh, to convert our sumps, our water recharge basins, into bird sanctuaries and preserves for the entire community to enjoy. As you know, in Nassau County, we have over 600 sumps or water recharge basins. They were primarily designed in order to serve as catchment basins, if you will, for streets that might be flooding or to uh, recharge the sole source aquifer over which we all live. And we use that sole source aquifer as the source of our drinking water on Long Island. Over the years, those sumps and recharge basins have uh, tragically been permitted to deteriorate. But what we hope to do uh, by converting these sumps and recharge basins into bird sanctuaries and uh, into preserves is to uh, nourish the natural flora and fauna to bring back the natural plant life and to attract the birds that had existed there uh, in prior years and to in some cases if it's appropriate while providing protection around the uh, specific sump area to make it accessible for the neighbors and the community to enjoy as passive areas where they can uh, simply sit and enjoy nature and enjoy the benefits of a preserve. I have asked uh, two very special people to help coordinate uh, this program. Uh, one is my wife, Betsy, who joins with me today, who is a, a professor of biology and who uh, was prior president of the South Shore Audubon Society, and Carol Neidich Ryder, who really does much of our county work in the uh, preserves throughout the county and is our uh, green space curator for the Nassau County Department of Parks and Recreation. Welcome, both of you, to the program. Thank, Thank you. you. Maybe you could outline for us uh, exactly how this program would work. The um, idea of uh, developing a sump into a bird sanctuary really originated at Hofstra University, uh, where we happened to be uh, working on the Arboretum at Hofstra University um, a couple of years ago, and we realized that there was a sump on the campus, and, and the idea came up, well, what could we do to beautify that area? Uh, we the the um officials the the uh, president of Hofstra University was very very helpful in supporting us and um we were able to go forward and actually develop the sump into a bird sanctuary and a nature preserve with the help of many volunteers with the help of of uh, some fundraising through the Hofstra University Arboretum uh the project involves uh, developing trails, it involves um, some signage so that uh, people will, will be aware of the kinds of plants and, and the birds that can be attracted to those plants. Uh, we are installing some benches so people can go in there and sit down and relax. We've actually installed some um, specialty gardens. There is a hummingbird garden that will specially attract hummingbirds. There is a water area, a freshwater water area that will, uh, um, that, that has freshwater vegetation and other um, resources for water birds and uh, trails that go around and, and people can actually use this as an educational resource as well as an aesthetic um, experience as part of the um, uh, Arboretum at Hofstra anyway uh, and it's a very a very um, educational way that people can really learn how to plant, plant to put in plants in their own homes to attract wildlife to their own gardens. Now, how long did the uh, Hofstra Arboretum take to become a reality? That project was begun in about 1992, and uh, when we the, the sump at Hofstra is a state sump, and so when we received permission from the state to uh, work on that sump, of course you can't change the uh, function of the recharge basin, which is to really allow the water to recycle back into the ground um, from the streets, from the runoff from the streets, and uh, without altering the function of that um, uh, purpose, we were we received permission to install some plantings and some trails and, and uh, just enhance the beauty of the sump so that people could come in there and enjoy it and it will, would also provide a place for the, the uh, wildlife to uh, live. What we're actually talking about doing is, is augmenting the function of the water right. recharge basins to actually assist them in, in, uh, in recharging the aquifer and at the same time uh, adding the additional element of restoring the natural fauna and flora. Uh, Carol, there's uh, 
one of the basic elements of this program is to uh, to do this uh, at no taxpayer cost to, to to engender the support of the local community to to bring volunteers into the process which has a number of benefits number one it, it helps us in terms of um, reducing costs for the taxpayers but secondly it engenders a sense of community pride and and when you engender that sense of community pride I think that becomes the fuel for the engine of success on on any of these programs how how would you anticipate that happening if you undertake a project in a community well there's several ways it, it could be approached the first way is that people are already calling Betsy and people have been calling me to say I have a sump once they heard that we we're going to be in charge of the sumps as it were for the natural history aspects of it they're already calling our office and saying how can I do this in my community so we'll be meeting and forming a committee to uh, be able to go out and deal with the different people in the community um, that want to help in addition what will happen is that um, there may be Girl Scout troops or other organizations like Sierra or there might be a civic association that I except for uh, in addition to or whatever not just being individual volunteers there may be organizations that may want to call us and say I have an organization I have 50 people 100 people um, I want to get on board too so basically we're, we have a sump committee of um, private and governmental people and we're getting together and we're going to figure out how the actual mechanism that they can contact us and how we'll be working but it should be work out really well. Well, one area where this has already worked out well is in Garden, the Garden City. City. Tell us about that. Well, at Garden City, there's a five-acre Nassau County sump, and one of the members of the Garden City Environmental Advisory Board, whose name is Rob Alvey, was very interested in developing that sump into a bird sanctuary. He had heard about the Hofstra Project, and he uh, was familiar with the South Shore Audubon Society, which manages other preserves in Nassau County. And so he came to us and, and uh, inquired information on how he could actually do that in Garden City. And that's really the first county sump that uh, was developed. And I have to say that they were absolutely wonderful in Garden City rallying volunteers and donations and people and organizations to help with the project so that they were able to plant trees and, and construct trails and put in bird nest boxes and um, a, a variety of different things to really develop the, uh, this large sump into a beautiful area. Now, who were the volunteers? I mean, there were the scouters. You had, you had South Shore Audubon. In fact, you had two young men, I think. There's right. one now who's trying to get his Eagle Scout Award and right. one who did by helping out at that facility. What's, what's nice in these big projects is you have multi-level community participation, not just one organization or one person. In Garden City, there were two young men. One got his Eagle. I think one is getting his Eagle because of that. You had Girl Scouts, Brownies. Uh, the civic associations, mm -hmm. the, the village of Garden City, the people themselves were involved in, the people that live around the community, and South Shore Audubon was very involved in their co-managing it um, with the local community. So you can actually adopt a sump, a preserve, a water recharge basin, yeah. and the community will care for it. Well, what's really nice is it not only takes care of the things that live in the sump, but it also uh, solves a whole bunch of other problems. One is we want to do something about non-point sources of pollution. And the non-point sources come from road runoff and the things that people put in the road. If the people that live in the neighborhoods where all the water goes into the sump know that that's where the water goes, they're going to be careful what they put on their lawn, they'll be careful what they put in the street, and it'll be like, wait a minute, that's going in my sump. Uh, let me, and so it, it causes this mushrooming effect of this wonderful educational program yeah. that not only will help the sumps, but it's going to help our non-point pollution program that we have in the county. So it reduces taxpayer costs. It's a win-win thing. It, it beautifies the community, and it's an educational process, and which only it helps our drinking schools water. can participate in. It helps in our too, drinking water. Um, let me just ask you, in the few moments that we have left, actually we've got one moment left. Okay. So tell me, what, what's the natural flora and fauna that we could hope to, to nurture there? Well, in my, in my 24 years with the county, sometimes when I'm looking for open space, I do go to the sumps and I'm looking for different plants and animals. There are actually, in some of the sumps, where the, where the sumps um, are older than the communities around them, they actually have some rare species of plants, like there are some endangered peas that I've found in some sumps. And so uh, there are peas, there are Hempstead Plains vegetation. The sumps are reflective of the areas around um, where they, they were built. So if you have um, a South Shore sump, maybe there would be red maple trees or even pine barrens vegetation that comes back in the sump. If you have a North Shore, maybe you have an oak 
uh, forest. And if you have the Mid-Island, you generally have that, that kind of like natural history and fighting with each other between the natural stuff like the Hempstead Plains vegetation and the weed trees like the, the cherries and the um, Alanthus that would come in in Mid-Island. So it's actually um, a neat thing because another, another spin-off will be as we study the sumps, we'll see what vegetation that might be left in. And we might find some rare species. Well, it's an exciting project. And since there are 600 sumps, it's well, going to take a little bit of time. But we can get all communities involved simultaneously. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining with us. And since this is the uh, last program of uh, 1996, um, I just wanted to take one final moment before we close our show uh, to say that as we approach this very special time of year, we have a great deal to be thankful for. Um, we have successfully in this county cut or frozen Nassau County's portion of real property taxes in seven out of eight years. We have recorded the lowest crime rate in the past 25 years. Our crime rate today is lower than it was in 1970. And we have consistently had the lowest unemployment rate of any place in the region for years. But those are statistics. The most precious commodity that we have is our citizens. The love, the caring, and compassion that they provide to all of us. And that's what makes the quality of life here second to none. So on behalf of uh, Betsy and my family, to you and, uh, and your loved ones, I hope everyone can pause during this special time of year to share cherished moments with family and friends. And we wish you a holiday season that is filled with good health, happiness, and the joys that you so richly deserve. We look forward to 1997 with enthusiasm and excitement, and I trust everyone will share good health.